Hello and welcome my friends. This is Jennifer from Mystic Star. I want to thank you guys so very much for joining me today and welcome you to my weekly group reading for the week of April 4th through to the 10th. Well, welcome my friends to the first full week of April. I don't know about you, but where I live, it doesn't quite feel like spring yet. We just got through another snowstorm up here. So I really, really am focusing in on that spring energy, trying to amplify it a bit to hopefully turn some of this wintry weather into some much needed spring-like weather. That abundance and that growth comes with this beautiful, youthful energy. We're going to be focusing in on that spring-like energy, helping us to make some shifts in our everyday that's going to help us with getting to where it is we want to go. This amazing energy is there for us. We just need to reach out and grab it, use it to our advantage. And this week, that's exactly what I want to do. We're going to be looking at how we can make some shifts, embrace some opportunities, and make a difference in our everyday. Of course, we're going to do that through looking at what to expect in our week. Not only those opportunities, but of course that challenge as well. We need both sides to that same coin. Knowing this will help us truly make those choices that are in our best and greatest good. Like I said, this week I'm really focusing in on that spring energy. So there was really one deck that screamed spring and some amazing energy. And that's the crystal unicorn tarot. It was brought out many years ago by Pamela Chen and I absolutely adore it. It does have that very pastel-y color and of course we're dealing with crystals and unicorns. Two very very powerful things. Then I matched it with the crystal wisdom oracle helping us to gain some insight into that healing that's going to support us with well, making some of those shifts we need, and topped it off with the Creative Visions Sovereign Oracle. I think it's going to be a fantastic combination. Now, like always, there are links below to all these fantastic decks, so should they speak to you, you can go check them out for yourselves. And, of course, my selections this week, my friends, we have some Rainbow Fluorite, some Rose Quartz, and then smoky quartz. I want you to choose whichever crystal resonates with you right now. It may not be your favorite crystal, but it is the crystal that keeps catching your eye. Then go into the description box below. There you're going to find timestamps. Click on your crystals correlating timestamp. It's going to take you straight to your reading and I will see you there my friends. Hello and welcome my Florite friends. This reading is especially for you. Now, like always, I have the full decks of both the tarot and both oracle cards here, so you get the most comprehensive and meaningful reading for you. Without further ado, let's see what the week has in store for my Florite friends. What can my Florite friends expect from the week of April 4th? through the tenth. Prayer. Such a fantastic card. Now, I know there's a lot of stigma around the word prayer. There's been a lot of spiritual abuse and emotional abuse around the word prayer as it's connected in with Christianity and Catholicism and, well, it's not necessarily always a good thing. 
If you are struggling with the word prayer, you should know I'm not encouraging you to go to a certain venue or go worship and, you know, recount your sins and ask for forgiveness. No, that's not what this card is talking about. This card is talking about asking for the help you need. Putting what it is we need into words. You don't have to go to a special place for that. And actually, some of us have very unique places that we can go to connect in more fully with that higher power. And it's in that higher power that we're going to find the direction and the support we need most. When we use our words and ask for the help we need, the universe or the great being or spirit or God, whatever you want to call that bigger entity will support you in the best and most meaningful way for you. Know that sometimes what we're praying for is one of the challenges or key elements that we wanted to learn or experience in this lifetime. So sometimes our prayers are answered in ways that we don't get. Know that there is a plan. And trust in that plan. For sure, ask for the help. Because the high vibrational beings, the universal energy, is going to support us in our learning. In experiencing what it is we needed and wanted to learn. I know it can be hard because some of the learning can be pretty painful at times. However, very meaningful. We're learning lessons. We may be breaking patterns that we've been holding on for for lifetimes. So, the most important thing, ask for the help that we need using our words. And Archangel Michael likes to remind me to remind you guys, we don't pray to the high vibrational beings. We can ask for their help. And when we do that, they are more able to help us. We're reducing that law of free will and allowing them to help us. We pray to that higher being, the universal energy, your God, your goddess. I know it's a fine line between asking the high vibrational beings for support and well, praying to that universal energy. However, it is really important that we, well, embrace that hierarchy, if you will. Acknowledging it through that prayer. And prayer, yes, it's very similar to asking for help. But opening that line of communication, acknowledging, you know what, you're not perfect. You've made some mistakes, but you need to move forward. You need that guidance and support on how to best go forward, how to best move yourself into alignment with your soul's deeper purpose. When we pray to that higher being, that universal energy, We're directing it to that next stage, that next level. And if you're not too sure how to connect into that energy or to, well, connect into that prayer, you can work with Archangel Sandalfun. It's one of his many roles to support humanity in getting their prayers up to that higher vibrational energy. Now, I do have a beautiful meditation that brings in harmony and balance that I did with Archangel Sandalfun. That harmony and balance can not only support you in your growth and what you want to do this week, but working with Archangel Sandalfun, he can take that intention and that prayer back up to the higher universal energy, the God Goddess, what you want to label it as. Now, 
If you're new to my channel and aren't too sure about the meditation I just spoke about, I do have two meditative playlists. One is Healing with the Archangels, or of course you'd find that amazing meditation with Archangel Sandalfon. And then I have a second playlist called Just You and Me, where it's just you and me. We focus in on a skill or a tool that is going to support you along your journey. Now, all my meditations, they're about 30 minutes long. They're a guided meditation. And most importantly, they are free for you to visit and revisit as you need. There's no strings or catches. It's just a tool and supports that are going to help you. Because that's what we need right now. Are some tools and supports. So, we know that prayer and that high vibrational support is going to be important. Let's look at what else will help you. What should my... Fluorite friends, focus in on this week. <laughs> I love these little ducks. They are so funny. Poetry. Less prose, more flowing words. Dance with language. See that simple beauty in everything. Then capture it in your own unique way. So important. Like I said, using our words is going to be an important part of that prayer. But we don't need to have that, I guess, formality, if that makes sense. Like I said, we don't have to go to church to sit at an altar and kneel down and beg for forgiveness. That's not something that serves you or the universe. The universe doesn't require us to do that. We need to make this our own. We need that unique, well, signature, if you will. We need the meaning and fulfillment. Not all that pompous stance that has been added to prayer. It's that connection and using our words. Because when we put it out there, we're starting to, well, ask for the help we need and almost realize it in our own way. Because a lot of times things ruminate within us, but until you actually hear it out loud or see it in the written format, you're not really connecting into it. We need that connection. We need to let things flow and then we need to embrace it and dance with it. It will really support us in gaining that direction and understanding to what's going to support us the most in this week and in weeks to come. Let's look at this week a little bit more. What can my fluorite friends expect from the beginning of the week? Oh, we're starting off with a bang. Death. The 13th card in the Major Arcana. Now, I know many people see the death card and we start to cringe. Death does not obviously mean death. It's a transition card. We need to release aspects and pieces that are not serving us and connect in to more meaningful and fulfilling aspects. There's only so much space we have within ourselves. Think of it as having a cup within us. We can only hold so much before it starts to overflow and we feel overwhelmed and burdened. If we dig down deep and start to remove some of that sediment, that gunkiness, that low vibration that's causing stagnation and stuckness, when we release that, well, we're giving ourselves so much more added space. If you take a fishbowl and you take the, the sand out of the bottom, the water depletes quite, well, substantially. The same is true when you start to release those low vibrational aspects that are holding you back. 
And I acknowledge sometimes we don't even know what's holding us back. We don't have the words. We don't have the ability to identify it. And that's okay. We can start to release some of that without having to relive or identify it. I know that sounds crazy, but follow me here a bit. I have a couple meditations where we're looking at some global release for us as an individual. Well, that global release is what we're really looking at. When you're releasing aspects and pieces and not identifying it, not causing yourself more trauma and not causing yourself well, more things to have to release in the future. The first meditation that comes to mind is one I did with Archangel Metatron, where we're looking at releasing some of that pain and fear. We don't need to go through what brought on that pain. We can start to release it and take some of that burden away. When you do that, like I said, you have that fishbowl. You're taking some of that gunk out. The second meditation that comes to mind is one I did last month with Archangel Mariel, where we start to release some of those memories. In the same fashion, we're not reliving it. We don't want to relive this. Like I said, we don't want to re-traumatize ourselves. We want to release, not cause more pain, more fear. This is time for you. We need to make it meaningful, not scary or painful. Now, if you are suffering from flashbacks or reoccurring, you know, ruminating thoughts about some of this stuff, these meditations may not be for you. You may want to go with something more gentle, like for instance, the meditation that kicked off my Archangel meditations, the meditation with Archangel Raphael. It's a global healing meditation. It helps with healing us body, mind, and soul. Like I said, we don't want to cause ourselves more pain and more fear. So you're going to have to make sure you call that for you. Meditation in itself will support us with our healing, will support us with strengthening us. And that's what's really going to count here. We have to remember, in the death card, it has these double pillars. Well, that double pillar is connected to the major arcana, the moon. Same double pillars you see closer up in that card. And the moon, it's a pillar card. The death card is kind of that entry into that next stage. It does have the pillars in the distance, but it's not a gateway card. The moon is. Death will lead you straight to the moon, where you are connected in to that divine feminine energy, the mystery and the unknown, helping to embrace it, helping to make some shifts for your greater good. So, the beginning of the week, we're able to do some releasing and some healing that's going to set us up for the shifts that we need for our greater good. Whether or not we embrace that gateway this week or in weeks to come, we know it's there. It's up to us to do the work to get there. So let's go on to the middle of the week. What can my fluorite friends expect from the middle of the week? The Five of Pentacles. Kind of not surprising. Anytime you're looking at that release, you're looking at kind of feeling depleted. Many of us are already feeling disconnected right now. And, well, the global situation isn't helping. Many of us are still looking at restrictions. I know especially in Canada we are, as the variants are starting to take hold up here. However, this card talks more about the disconnection we have 
with that high vibrational source. The middle of the week, we're really going to be needing to focus in on that intentional connection, both with a universal energy and the high vibrational beings. When you set those intentions and we use our words, we can start to negate and release some of that disconnect. We're working on connecting and utilizing this amazing energy to our advantage. So in the middle of the week, like I said, we're going to feel kind of disconnected and it's going to be a bit of a challenge. This would be a fantastic time to connect in with Archangel Sandalfon, to get your prayer up towards that higher vibrational energy, and then also helping with some balance and harmony within, strengthening you, healing you, and helping you out of that snowstorm. What can my fluorite friends expect from the end of the week? I kind of like how death and the five of pentacles, they're all leading towards the end of the week. They're going somewhere. Don't know where they're going, but <laughs> yes, they are. They'd be going to a party. The three of cups. That celebration, that connection, that community. When we start to feel better, because we're not caring so much, we don't feel so tired and burdened, when we start to connect in to that higher vibrational energy, well, we feel stronger. Anytime you connect into that high vibrational energy, it rejuvenates you. It doesn't take away, it adds, which adds to your strength. It adds to that, well, excitement and joy. All of it will combine into you feeling stronger, you feeling more connected, more able to embrace the opportunities that are all around you. The end of the week brings that joy, that happiness, the growth and the abundance that you're looking for. Because of course, that guidance and support, it's going to be there. You ask for it, it will come. I know sometimes it's hidden in plain sight, but it'll still be there. We need to slow down, be mindful of it, and pay attention. Those messages, they're there. We just miss them a lot. So we do have some work to do this week. However, it will pay off. The universe likes to reward us for our work. The work you do through meditation, intention, and connection will really pay off with abundance in all aspects of, of life, all aspects of you. So we know what the week is going to bring. Let's look at that flip side, the other side of the coin. What challenge will my fluorite friends face? for the week of April 4th through the 10th. The Three of Wands. Now, threes in tarot are about expression and growth. The Three of Wands is a movement card. We've made some decisions in the Two of Wands. The Three of Wands talks about taking action to those decisions. Well, we're not going to feel too confident in putting action to what this week is offering you because we are looking at that shift. Like I said in the introduction, I knew this week was going to offer us those shifts, those releases. We need that release. We need to lessen our load so we can move forward with greater ease and less pain. 
So there will be that resistance to embracing, especially what's offered in the beginning of the week, in the middle of the week, because of what we're looking at. We're looking at that disconnection and, well, that transition. Our ego is going to be screaming at us that it is unsafe. There is uncertainty. We need to stay stagnant and stuck. Hence the challenge here. We do need to set those intentions, use our words, and start to combat our ego a bit. Meditation will support you with that because you are grounding yourself. You are taking control. You're taking control of your breath, which helps to calm that overactive system that our ego likes to get rolling on us. You're able to balance both hemispheres of the brain, which supports you in making decisions for your greater good. You're less reactive and more mindful and planful of what it is you want to do. Additionally, the meditations, they open you up to the guidance and support of the high vibrational beings. Like I said, those messages, they're there. We're just not too observant to receive them as much as they're there. Now, speaking of messages hidden in plain sight, we have multiple threes. In angel messages, when you see that multiple three, the angels are telling you something close to your heart needs to be expressed which is very true here. We're feeling disconnected and, well, kind of stuck. We need that release. We need to be reconnected. That's why prayer and words are so important this week. So, we know what's going to be important. Let's look at what other supports I can add to this. What blessings can my fluorite friends embrace for the week of April 4th through the 10th? Mysticism. I love this card. Such a pretty card. Mysticism talks about that unknown, that mystery that's held in the moon. When we sit in that unknown, we sit in that uncertainty, we become more comfortable with that unexpected, that mysterious unknown element that's plaguing us. It's not so much of a plague as it is a connection. Now, in this deck, the border color, it connects in with a chakra. So this yellow card, the prayer card, connects in with your solar plexus. It helps to strengthen you, give you that inner flame, that courage and determination we need. This purple connects in with our third eye. That third eye supports us in receiving those messages that the high vibrational beings are sending us. We need our third eye functioning at a better rate than what it currently is. And part of what's giving our third eye the most grief is our uncertainty and our fear around our clairs and our higher self, that intuitive self. We need to strengthen the system so we are more open to this amazing support. Now, I do have a meditation with Archangel Raziel that I created last year where we worked on connecting in with our intuitive abilities, helping to strengthen them. And of course, strengthening them will support us in receiving that message and that much needed guidance. Expansion. Such a fantastic card. Reminding us that as we open ourselves up, 
as we ask for the help that we need, you're going to see beings on the, the spiritual and physical plane start to show up for us. It's amazing what happens when you use your words. This, like I said earlier, the high vibrational beings, they're bound by the law of free will. However, when you use your words, you start to bring that law of free will down. Additionally, on the physical plane, that support system, many times our physical support team doesn't realize that we're struggling so much. They're wrapped up in their own world. However, when you ask for the help you need and want, whether or not you can truly enunciate it, they're there for you, for your greater good. If you said to one of your good friends or family members that you're struggling and you need help, well, you may not be able to clearly say what it is you need help with. However, you can talk about that disconnection, that need for support. And through that communication, you're going to be able to start to talk about and tease out what it is you need. And that's a big part of it too. Using our words and asking for that help. We're not meant to do this journey alone. And we like to try to do this, and it doesn't make a lot of sense. It actually adds to that disconnection, that loneliness, that isolation that many of us know far too well. All right, let's end off on any further insight, wisdom, and guidance that we can share with my fluorite friends for the week of April 4th through the 10th. Strength, such a fantastic card. So strength talks about using your skills and your abilities to tame that beast. And many times that beast is your ego. We have this inner, I guess, beast, if you will, inner lion that tries to protect us. And sometimes successfully and sometimes just causing more heartache and pain. We have that ability to use our skills and our well, abilities to our advantage, helping to tame that tiger so we can well, do what we need to do. Sure, there might be fear and uncertainty there. However, when we use our skills to our advantage, we tap into that infinite energy of the universe or God, Goddess, the great creator, whatever you want to label it as, when we connect into that infinite power, well, there's not much that holds us back. We need to do that this week as there is a lot of uncertainty. When we're looking at reconnecting in and releasing aspects and pieces that aren't serving us. It's all about trusting you and your abilities, which I know is truly a challenge. Most of us like to negatively talk about ourselves to ourselves, that negative self-talk, those limiting beliefs. They are there and we use them all the time. Our ego thrives on them. Another meditation that might support you when the ego starts to rear its head a bit is a meditation that I did with Archangel Raguel, where we looked at that balancing out of thoughts and beliefs of self. It's a fantastic meditation that really does support us in strengthening our belief system of us. The Empress, adding to our threes, so really connecting into that message of multiple three of expression of self. 
when we're able to connect into self, to that high vibrational aspect of self, releasing that gunkiness, going back to that fishbowl, taking out that sediment and that gunkiness, gives way to the growth and the abundance that we're looking for. And the Empress is, well, supporting us with this growth and this development. She's a very fertile card. It's just, we have no more room for any further growth and development. We need to release what's not working, what's not serving us. Going back to that fishbowl, we take out that gunky heaviness that's holding us back, that has to do with our low vibrational self. Well, we have space within us for further growth, development, and abundance. And the Empress is going to make sure that it is full and beautiful. It's fulfilling and joyful. We don't have to do a lot of extra work. We just need to focus in on those elements in our life that are going right. Because when we do that, we're feeding those amazing, abundant areas within us, within our lives. And when we do that, well, we're just adding to our abundance. We're adding to what's going right. And finally, the Five of Cups. This week is about not so much focusing in on what's not going right, what's holding us back, focusing in on those two cups that's full of abundance and growth. That shift in perspective is really what we're looking at. When I say release, people get anxious because it looks like we might be doing some major changes or leaps of faith. I'm not about that. We need stable, small shifts that are maintainable. Doing some meditation, helping with that release, redirecting what we're focusing in on, well, that's going to support us in a lot of shifting. Nothing that is unstable or fearful. It's about focusing in on what's going right. And that's not a scary part. It's usually a part that we're like, yeah, it's the one part of my life that's going right. I don't know what, what's going on in the rest of my life. It's kind of all of a gong show. Let's focus in on what's going right. What the universe has been encouraging you to focus in on. However, we've been so stuck in what isn't working. Now, of course, we do also have double fives. Now, in tarot, fives are a challenge. However, in angel messages, they're not. In angel messages, when you have that multiple five, the angels are telling you a positive change is coming your way. Just really reconfirming what it is I've been saying. Focusing in on the positive, what's going right, will help you shift out of that hyper-focus of what's not. I want to thank you guys so very much for joining me today and watching this video. I hope that you found this video fun and helpful and that the unicorns and the crystals supported you in gaining some new perspective in what the week wants to share with you. If you like this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up. It helps me be found on the sea of YouTube, which supports us collectively, starting to raise our vibration and getting ourselves unstuck. And if you did like this video, don't forget to subscribe. There's so much more coming your way and you don't want to miss any of it. The best way to stay connected so you don't miss out on any of this amazing insight, healing, and education is through subscribing to my channel and hitting that little red bell so you don't miss a video. And also, if you did enjoy this video and want to support me making more, I do have a Patreon page. I have provided a link below, so why not go check it out? Until tomorrow, my fluorite friends. Hello and welcome my Rose Quartz friends. This reading is especially for you. Now, like always, I have the full decks of both 
the tarot and both oracle cards here so you get the most comprehensive and meaningful reading for you. Without further ado, let's see what the week has in store for my Rose Quartz friends. What can my Rose Quartz friends expect from the week of April 4th through the 10th? Release. Not the most cheery of cards. However, very, very poignant. Like I said in the introduction, this week is going to offer us a lot of opportunities. We are held back by this low vibrational gunkiness that's within us. We need to release what's not working so we can embrace more fully what is. Even in this really kind of dreary and sad card, the sun is bursting through that darkness. We need to embrace that light, amplify it, so it dries this card up. It's not quote unquote a bad card, it's just a harder card to embrace because it's not all light and fluffy. And the same is true with that need to release. We're not releasing aspects and pieces that we need. This sorrow, this pain, this heartache, it's not serving us. It's time to start to release it. And I know that sounds really hard. It's not as hard as it sounds. I have a support for that. Actually, I have a couple of them. Last year, I did a meditation with Archangel Metatron. And this is exactly what we looked at, releasing that heartache and pain. And that's what we need to do. We don't need to go through and nitpick every single event that brought us sadness, fear, or heartache. We need to dump it, releasing it, healing those aspects, those events within us so that we can embrace that light. Now, if you're new to my channel and aren't too sure about the meditation I just spoke about, I have two meditative playlists. The first one is Healing with the Archangels, where you'll find that meditation I spoke about with Archangel Metatron. The second is a Just You and Me playlist, where it's just that, just you and me, working on a skill or a tool that will support you. Now, all my meditations are about 30 minutes long. They're a guided meditation. And most importantly, they are free for you to visit and revisit as you need. There are no strings attached. It's just a support that we need right now. So that meditation with Archangel Metatron will support us with that release. Another meditation that comes to mind is one I did last month with Archangel Mariel, where we're releasing memories. Now, similar to Archangel Metatron's meditation, we're not revisiting or recounting our traumatic events, those traumatic memories. This is a global healing. We're releasing stuff without revisiting it. We don't want to re-traumatize ourselves, so we need to be really mindful of that. If you're still reliving and having a lot of traumatic flashbacks, these two meditations may not be for you. You can still release this pain and do some healing for you through a meditation, actually it's the first meditation I brought out, which was a meditation with Archangel Raphael. It's a healing meditation that's very gentle and won't start to push your ego. And we don't want to re-traumatize ourselves because we don't want more heartache and fear to slow us down. All right, let's look at this week a little bit more. What should my Rose Quartz friends 
focus in on this week. <laughs> I really love these little decks. Undo. Control Alt Delete. Take the stitches out and do it again. You'll be much happier with the final outcome. Untie a stubborn knot before you proceed. This release, it has to happen. We can't go forward without it. Think of it as having a cup within you. There's only so much space that we can hold in that cup before it starts to overflow. We feel overwhelmed and burdened. We need to dig down into that bottom part of the cup where that low vibrational gunky heaviness, that residue is lying. That's what we need to release. Think of it as a fishbowl. When you have a fishbowl and you take the, the bottom rocks out and you pull it out, there's a lot more space left. It displaces a lot of space. And that's what we really need to be focusing in on, releasing what's not working so we have space for stuff that will. Really sums up what this week is going to bring you, but let's look at this week. Let's get into it a little bit more. What can my Rose Quartz friends expect from the beginning of the week? If life was so easy to do the control alt delete and just erase parts of stuff. However, we know that's not the case. And this is exactly what we need to do. We need to take well, the bull by its horns and get that work done. The six of cups. Now sixes in tarot are about balance and harmony. We need that balance. We need that stability. Anytime we're releasing things, our ego goes to death con five and starts to bring up every heartache, fear and pain we have. It's going to slow us down in any way it can. It's taken years to get where you're at. Lifetimes. And your ego is not going to let you start to undo things. So that balance, that stability will support you in doing exactly what your ego fears. Undoing some of this heaviness, this pain. Now we do have the Six of Cups. Cups are a very intuitive card. They deal with that intuition and emotion. We need to be mindful of not getting caught up in the emotion paying more attention to that intuition. Intuition is a lot harder to hear than our ego. Our ego is low vibrational and well, we can hear it loud and clear. High vibration, on the other hand, is a lot harder for us to connect in with. The Six of Cups is talking about taking that time, balancing self, and connecting in to that intuitive message. Now, many of you will know the Six of Cups is a reminiscing card. Now, we need to be very careful. It's not so much that we want to go back and reminisce about those challenges. No, no, no. That would only well, aggravate everything. Like I said, we have to be careful with that emotion. We want to reflect back on what's going right. Many of us are so hyper-focused in on what's not working that we're missing those little aspects and pieces that are going right. So we're not so much quote-unquote reminiscing about the good old days. We're not reminiscing about that heartache and fear. We're looking at what's working. That's what we need to focus in on. When we release what's not, we can amplify what is. So at the beginning of the week, we want to work on that balance. 
We want to connect into our intuition. We want to work on what's going right. Now, we don't want to hyper-focus in on anything. Giving yourself bits and pieces of time here and there, incorporating it into your, your day, will support you in releasing and slowly working on this. We want to be able to enjoy the here and now, the opportunities that will be all around you. We also need to ensure that we are dealing with those demands of our everyday life so that our physical being isn't caught up in more heartache and pain. So let's go on to the middle of the week. What does the middle of the week, whoa, important card, bring my Rose Quartz friends? I love this card. The Page of Cups. Pages are that childlike, innocent energy that's full of play, full of inquisitical energy, questioning and asking those hard questions. Because, like I said before, we've been avoiding things. We've been so focused in on what's not working that we haven't asked the important questions, the meaningful questions. And that's what we need to do. Ask those hard questions about self, gaining that insight about what would work for us now. Like I said, we do have to be mindful. We don't want to start to relive or re-traumatize ourselves. But what would work right now? What would make things better for you right now? And then what's more, how do you get that? We're not going to get a magic fairy godmother wishing her wand around and saying bibbidi bobbidi boo. As many of us would love that, it's not going to happen. We need to look at that situation, ask the hard questions, be critical of our thinking. And we have to be mindful, guys. I'm not saying being critical of self, I'm being critical of our thinking. Assess that situation for that situation. Not the emotion, that heartache and pain that's bound up by the situation, that situation itself. Looking at it from that mindset, not the emotional set. We need the information, not the emotion right now. Then we can sprinkle in our intuition as we have another cup to help us create a solution that's going to be meaningful for us. Another element of the cups, because we do have that emotional element, is our creativity. We have that ability to create solutions, to create outcomes that are going to be more meaningful and fulfilling for us. We just need to slow down and ask those hard questions. All right, so we're asking questions, we're gaining that insight, and throughout the week, you may want to touch in on some of that meditation with Archangel Metatron and Archangel Mariel. You can add in other healing meditations that really connect in with you so that you can start to tackle some of this built up pain this built up heaviness. So we can keep going on and doing these intermittently throughout the week. Meditation, of course, brings in that balance. And then we have that added healing ability as well. Let's go on to the end of the week. What can my Rose Quartz friends expect from the end of the week? Now, if you want another meditation that is kind of coming up for me right now, because we have that double cup, 
We're working on that intuitive energy. I did a meditation with Archangel Raziel where we focused in on the intuitional energy, strengthening your intuitive self. A fantastic kind of support and cherry on top, if you will, for another meditation that would help you with really working on some skills that are for your greater good. Adding to the page, the page of swords. Same inquisical energy. This time we're adding that knowledge. The page of cups has supported us in asking some of those harder questions. We're going to continue asking those questions. We're going to continue to cut away that bulky heaviness. Taking that information for information's sake. Like I said, that emotion, that heartache, that pain, it's going to slow us down. The page of swords will support us in cutting it away while the angels support us in healing those very vulnerable and kind of sore spots. Opening us up for that information, that guidance that's going to help us for a greater good help to inspire and invigorate us. Now, pages are the 11th card in the minor arcana. In angel messages, when you have that multiple 11, the angels are telling you to listen to your deeper intuitive self, which really connects in to that aha and insight that the high vibrational beings and your higher self are going to offer you this week. We just need to be present and mindful for it. We need to be in the here and now, not stuck in the past or hyper-focusing in on the future. Focusing in on what's happening right now. All right, so we know what the week is going to offer you guys. Yeah, it's not going to be um, all rainbows and fluffy. Sure, we have the unicorns, but we don't have all rainbows and fluffy here. However, that's not what these weeks are about. It's not what our lifetime's about. We're here to learn and experience. And we have some major learning to do. We need to break some patterns that we've been holding on to for lifetimes. So let's look at the challenge because there's always that flip side to this coin. What challenge will my rose quartz, whoa, friends, there you go. Important card. Face for the week of April 4th through the 10th. Sometimes the cards get really excited and need to come out. Oh, really not surprising. The Three of Swords. That heartache, that pain. Big Achilles heel that we all have. We're going to get wrapped up in that pain. We're going to get stuck and stagnant. We're going to slow down that exploration and that healing because we're going to be focused in on that ego's death con red alert. Your ego knows every button to push and knows how to slow you down. This week, it's going to be our biggest challenge. Now, there are some things that we can do. We know our ego is going to try and slow us down. So we can use that information to our advantage. We know that the ego cannot hold up to critical thinking. And that's exactly what we need to be focusing in on the most. So when you start to feel sad or that heartache is really starting to come forward, check into it. What brought this on? How come I'm feeling like this right now? Five minutes ago, things were going great. Check into it. Ask those hard questions. We've got the double page, guys. That inquisical energy. Let those inner toddlers out to, well, 
do the toddler inquisition. Why? Why? How come? Why? How come? It will give you the answers you need. We hold the answers. We just haven't been paying attention. Other ways that we can combat our ego, of course, through meditation, because we're calming our mind. We're taking control of our breath and we're being intentional. Big challenge for your ego. Additionally, if you are grounded and stable, you are more able to take this on. I have fantastic grounding meditations in both my playlists. I do this so that people have a variety of grounding supports to help them. So start off with that grounding meditation, and then you can add to it. You can add some crystals to support you in maintaining that grounded energy throughout your day. So any crystal that resonates with your root chakra, so red or black, something like tiger iron or black obsidian, fantastic grounding crystals helps you to maintain that grounded energy and presence throughout your day throughout whatever your ego is throwing at you it helps you keep yourself centered and focused at the task at hand so let's look at what other supports we can add to this what blessings can my rose quartz friends embrace for the week of April 4th through the 10th. Bittersweet. Very poignant. What we need to release now there's a bit of a bittersweet situation going on. We know that it's time to release it. It's not serving us, not in a high vibrational way. Yet it's a little bit hard to release and let go of because we have familiarity in it. There's a false stability held in what we need to release. Our ego has done a really good job of creating a false foundation, a false stability. We've needed it to get this far. It's now time to take that sword and start to cut away what's not working. And then letting it go. Know that you're not going to be releasing aspects and pieces that you need. If you need them, your higher self, the high vibrational beings will give it right back to you. It won't go far. When we release what's not working and when we start to heal ourselves and focus in on what is, what we've released doesn't come back. Faith. Incredibly hard to have when we're struggling, having faith in self, faith in our abilities, faith in the high vibrational beings, and of course, faith in the universe. Knowing that there's a plan that we don't remember, we signed up for it. And yes, I've asked those questions. What the hell did I sign up for? And what was I thinking? It doesn't help us to try and reflect on that. We'll never get the answer we need until we have passed on. So we deal with what we're dealing with. We start to work through it. Tease out the answers that we need. It's important, though, that we have faith, that we have support, that we're on the right track, and that when we focus in on that positive, that pathway becomes clearer. We gain more fulfillment and abundance. Important elements in trying to muddle through that unknown, especially when it's clouded by pain and fear. 
All right, let's end off on any further insight, wisdom, and guidance that we can share with my Rose Quartz friends for the week of April 4th through the 11th. Strength, the eighth card in the Major Arcana. Now strength talks about using our skills and our abilities to tame that beast. And mostly that beast is our ego. Taking control back. Using our skills and our abilities in a meaningful way. We just don't want to say, okay, I'm going to use my intuition because I was told to. No, it's about connecting into a natural ability that we all have and then allowing your unique ability to shine in its own way. We can't emulate or replicate other people in a well high vibrational way. We need to do it really in our own way. We have more meaning and fulfillment when we do. Now, additionally, the strength card connects into that infinite divine energy of the universe. We're not meant to do this journey alone. We know that. Connecting into the high vibrational beings and the universe, God, Goddess, the Creator, whatever you want to call that higher entity, will support us, invigorate, and empower us to do what we need to do. The Ten of Wands. Uh, this card comes up a lot. And the Ten of Wands talks about working harder than what we need. This unicorn can't really see through all the, the wands he's trying to carry to market. He knows the path really well, so he knows where he's going. But he can't see those stumbles. Those rocks that are sticking out that may be new. If we ask for the help that we need to do what we're trying to achieve, there'd be less burden on us. Additionally, if we stop trying to slow ourselves down by taking on other people's burdens, which again is a common theme, we would be able to get, again, the work we need to do for our greater good done. Our ego has many tactics on how to slow us down. And that, oh, I have to help them because they're struggling, is a way that we slow ourselves down. We start to take on other people's burdens and baggage so that they have an easier time slowing us down releasing some of those pieces will support us as well. Now we do have to be mindful. If you're a parent or you're caring for individuals who need added support, of course, that's not what we're looking at releasing. It's all the other stuff that we carry because that person was struggling. Or we have the presumption that we have to do it because no one else can. I know it's a news shocker, but that's not true. We're also taking away from other people's journeys, other people's experience, when we're trying to do everything. We can't be everything for everybody. We need to have that assessment, that understanding of what's working and what we need to do. What we don't need to carry any longer and what we're carrying because, well, we are trying to slow ourselves down. We're self-sabotaging. And finally, the Two of Wands. We have many decisions to make. It's up to us. We're the ones that have to enact 
and well do the work no one else will do it for us so making some decisions and most importantly starting to implement them we don't have to embark in major changes here we just need to start to work towards lessening our load and releasing what's not working a lot of this week is about reflection and understanding cutting away what's not working and asking those hard questions peppering in some healing and releasing through meditation that's action guys these are actions that are small and stable they're maintainable we're not looking at jumping into um, major changes or having leaps of faith I don't really believe in them they're too unstable and we're too likely to connect into our ego that will bring up that fear and possibility of pain which causes us to regress and then it's a lot harder to start all over again this week is for you and it's important you make some decisions and put some action to what's going to be meaningful for you I want to thank you guys so very much for joining me today and watching this video I hope that you found it well fun and enlightening I know it's not the happiest of readings but it's very meaningful so I hope you did get the insight and direction that you were looking for so that you can make some decisions for your greater good this week if you like this video please remember to give it a thumbs up it helps me be found on the sea of YouTube which supports us collectively starting to raise our vibration and getting ourselves unstuck and if you did like this video don't forget to subscribe there's so much more coming your way and you don't want to miss any of it the best way to stay connected so you don't miss out on any of this amazing insight healing and education is through subscribing to my channel and hitting that little red bell so you don't miss a video and also if you did enjoy this video and want to support me making more I do have a patreon page I have provided a link below so why not go check it out until tomorrow my rose quartz friends hello and welcome my smoky quartz friends this reading is especially for you now like always I have the full decks of both the tarot and both Oracle decks here so you get the most comprehensive and meaningful reading for you all right without further ado let's see what the week has in store for my smoky quartz friends what can my smoky quartz friends expect from the week of April 4th through the 10th impartiality wow what a fantastic card I know it seems like a weird card to get however really helpful for this week like I said in the introduction we have the ability to make some shifts in our everyday for a greater good there's a lot of opportunity all around us however we need to be well, mindful and pay attention impartiality talks about a couple of things one of course is that balance we need to be more observant than pushing ourselves forward when we're not listening and we're just pushing ourselves and we're getting ourselves in a direction and just going 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 we're missing the point we're missing those opportunities we need to slow down be observant and pay attention be open to the information and insight that's all around us the high vibrational beings have been trying to communicate with you and everybody that's what they do they leave messages in plain sight 
it's up to us to pay attention. We're taking those blinders off and being open to what's happening for you. What's going on in your life? Additionally, impartiality, like I said, it talks about being open to, well, the messages, but also to that reflection of what's happening. We need to take a look at what we're dealing with right here and right now. Reflect in on what's happening. It gives us a better foundation to move forward on rather than just having movement for movement's sake, which causes more stagnation and stuckness because we're just chasing our tail. We're getting ourselves in a good rut and we're not getting out of it. Now, I love the chakra deck, the chakra wisdom oracle, because the border correlates with your chakra. And this one being your crown chakra. That wisdom and insight from the universe and high vibrational beings. The more present we are, the more balanced we are, the more we're going to get. And this is very true for this week. Actually, very true for all weeks, but in particularly this week. So let's go into this a little bit more. What should my smoky quartz friends focus in on this week. These decks are so just spot on. Reveal. Pull back some layers to show what's underneath. Consider in what order and how quickly you should show the goods. Show your hand. Now, it's not about show and tell for others. It's more about you understanding you. Like I said, we need to be open and mindful to our current situation. Many of us have been avoiding ourselves and where it is we're on our journey. We're looking everywhere else for answers. Then, or what holds most of the answers? Us. That reflection and understanding is very needed. We start to reveal us to a very important consumer. Us. We've been avoiding ourselves for so long because our abilities and our skills can be scary. Our ego has helped bury them and helped to create kind of this puffy, fluffy barrier that we have to now unravel. It needs to be taken slow and steady so we don't destabilize ourselves. We don't expose ourselves too much, causing fear, causing regression because our ego starts to amplify that fear, which causes even more of a challenge to move forward. So this week, we're looking at understanding self more and being more open to the opportunities that are all around you. Because when we're present for self, we're present for those opportunities. So let's look at this week a little bit more. What can my Smoky Quartz friends expect from the beginning of the week? The King of Cups. So the King of Cups has the most control, just like any king does. They have the most fully defined personalities, so they have the most control and power. Whereas the King of Cups, you're looking at that emotional control. We're going to need it because our ego is going to try and stop us. It has worked hard to create that barrier, that protective bubble, if you will. 
It doesn't want you to be balanced and moving forward. It wants you to be stuck. If you're stuck and stagnant, you're quote unquote safe. Really doesn't serve us. It really just causes more heartache and pain. So at the beginning of the week, we need to start to take some control over those emotions. It's one of the things that we can truly take control of. There's so many things that are out of our control. How we respond to things, well, is one of our control areas. Taking that control will support us in creating that balanced and stable self and being open to those opportunities, to the growth that is there for you should you embrace it. Now, I know it can be really hard to say, oh, sure, just start to control your emotions. It'll be great. Well, how the heck do you do that? We're so taught to react. Well, I've got some supports here for that. So months ago, sometime last year, summerish time, I think, I published a meditation with Archangel Joe Fell. It helped to declutter our mind and connect us into our creativity, into our passions. Meditation is a fantastic tool to use to start to combat some of that turbulence and ego-driven mentality. Because, again, in meditation, you're taking control of your breath. And when you meditate, you start to balance out the two spheres of our brain. Many of us predominantly favor one side. So we're able to well, make decisions that are more well-founded because you're using more of your brain. Now, if you have a healing meditation, like the one with Archangel Jophel, what happens is, is that you're starting to well, rejuvenate and heal you so that you're able to well, make those decisions. And Archangel Jophel is an amazing archangel that helps to declutter our brain, or if you will, feng shui our brain, so that we are able to get rid of some of the built up busyness and focus in on the task at hand, giving us more control. Additionally, when we have added space in our repertoire, because we're not so overwhelmed, we can connect into our creativity. And that creativity can really strengthen and rejuvenate us. We don't feel so burnt out and we're less reactive. Win-win for you. Now, if you're new to my channel and aren't too sure about this meditation I'm talking about, I have two meditative playlists on my channel. The first one is Healing with the Archangels, where you'll find that meditation with Archangel Joe Fell. The second is Just You and Me playlist, where it's just you and me working on a skill or a tool that will support you. All my meditations are about 30 minutes long. They're a guided meditation. And most importantly, they are free for you to visit and revisit as you need. Because let's be honest, we need this added support. And of course, there are no strings attached. These are just some tools that I know will support you in on your journey. So that meditation with Archangel Joe Fell will support you in creating some stability within. So it doesn't matter what's happening on the exterior or outside, you're able to make some decisions for your greater good. All right, let's go on to the middle of the week. What can my Smoky Quartz friends expect from the middle of the week? The Knight of Swords. Now, knights are that adolescent, no fear energy. That go big or go home energy. The swords are about truth and knowledge. The Knight of Swords talks about that need to start to cut away some of that fluffiness. 
so that you can get to the heart of the matter. Now, like I said, we're not going to cut it all away. We're not going to try and like take a leap of faith or cut too deep. We're just going to start to cut away some of that fluffiness so that we can get to that important center. So the middle of the week, we are going to shift our gears because we have that stability. We're going to need to get some of the work done. Start to gain that understanding of self. Now, there's no quick fix to that. That understanding of self means some reflection and time with you because you need it now more than ever. And I know that can be pretty daunting. And the easiest way to start that reflection and that, well, rekindling of a relationship with self is through some meditations that I did with Archangel Shamuel, who, of course, supports us with that self-love. We really do need to rekindle that relationship we have with our higher self. Our ego, well, we hear them loud and clear. Our higher self, it's a lot harder to hear, and most of us are very disconnected from it. Taking that time and giving yourself that nurture and love will go a long way in strengthening that relationship and giving you those aha moments because you're focusing in on self, loving self. You get to know yourself a lot more. Now, if you haven't worked with Archangel Shamuel, I would recommend starting off with this first meditation as I do have three meditations with him, all surrounding that self-love topic. They're fantastic meditations and can be mixed and matched as you need. So let's go on to the end of the week. What can my Smoky Quartz friends expect from the end of the week? Strength, the eighth card in the Major Arcana. Strength is such a fantastic card. So strength talks about using your skills and your abilities in a meaningful and connected way that is all your own, helping you to tame that beast, a.k.a. your ego. That beast needs to be tamed because, well, it's out of control. We are so disconnected and disjointed because of past actions. We need that connection to self, of understanding self, so that we can start to take back that control. Take back our ownership and that balance of what it is we're trying to achieve. Now, additionally, strength not only uses your own ability, but it connects in to that infinite energy of the universe, or God, Goddess, the great creator, whatever you want to label that great entity. That higher vibrational energy will help to fuel you, help to encourage and nurture you as you go forward. We were never meant to do this journey alone. And it's time that we embrace our supports that are there, whether or not we can see them or not. Now, I know it can be really challenging to say, sure, I'll connect into that energy. I don't know how, but I'll do it. Sure, the high vibrational beings, fantastic. I don't know how to do that. Well, I've got supports here, guys. (laughs) I'm not here about saying, sure, do this. Yeah, good luck. That didn't sit well with me, and that's why I created my meditative playlists. So back in October, I created a series of three meditations in my Just You and Me playlist where we started to connect in with our high vibrational support team. 
fantastic meditations that take you through a journey where you can connect in, or actually, sorry, you can reconnect with some beings that have been with you for quite some time. Easy meditations that you can add in and start to strengthen your connection to that amazing support team. Now, keep in mind, guys, I've said balance is really important. We don't want to hyper-focus in on this because that's another tactic our ego likes to use. Oh, we want to do this? Let's do it full hog. Nothing else. It's going to burn us out. And your ego knows that. And it will use that to its advantage. We need balance. Focusing in on these pieces and aspects here and there throughout your week. Not overburdening or taxing ourselves. Making sure that our physical demands are met. And at the same time, starting to work on these pieces that are going to rejuvenate and inspire you. Really adding more fulfillment and joy in your day. None of this should be like, oh God, I have to do this now. It's more like, you know what? I need to take some time for me because I'm feeling worn out and burnt out. Taking 30 minutes, just you and your breath. And I know meditating is really hard to say, okay, I'm going to go upstairs and I go into this quiet room and I'm going to breathe. That's why my meditations are all guided. You're listening to me talk you through a journey, talk you through an experience that is going to be meaningful. That's going to rejuvenate and empower you. And that's exactly what's really going to help kind of overcome some of the challenges you're facing. Which is a fantastic segue into your challenge of the week. There's always a flip side, guys. What challenge? Whoa! Important card. Will my Smoky Quartz friends face for the week of April 4th through the 10th? Now, I kind of like how Strength and the Knight are both facing the King of Cups. Reminding you that that emotional stability is needed essentially through this whole entire week, but the weeks to come. Like I said, that stability, it goes a long way in strengthening you. The Six of Swords. It very much wanted to come out and join you. So sixes are about balance. They're about harmony. We're not going to feel too balanced this week. Let's be honest. We're taking on our ego. What is our ego going to do? Amplify that instability, that uncertainty. So we have to take matters into our own hands. We need to create that balance within self. I have another meditation that can help you with that balance. I brought it out at Christmas time, and it's in my Just You and Me playlist, where I'm balancing out your chakra system and your chakra system of course is an energetical system within you which is comprised of seven chakra centers well they can get misaligned and askewed and that takes more energy to do stuff in your day when they're aligned and they're really firing on all cylinders you feel more energized and your ego isn't as likely to topple you over because you're a lot stronger than your ego is. It's a fantastic meditation to not only connect in with your energetical sources, but it's also like an oil change for your, your system because you do feel that things are firing better. You don't feel so sluggish. Fantastic meditation to bring in that balance. Now, of course, the Six of Swords is a movement card. It talks about going from choppy waters to kind of calmer waters with that very abundant, distant land. Now, we're not going to feel too able to move forward because we feel kind of stuck. We feel sluggish. There's so much going on. How do I add this in? Oh, you you'd be surprised on how we can, you know, whine and complain to ourselves and beat ourselves up so we don't do it. We rather sit on the couch eating potato chips and watching Netflix, 
which by the way can be kind of a rejuvenating thing too because you're kind of switching off a bit but we use it as a crutch and an avoidant but we use it as a crutch and an avoidance tactic so it doesn't always serve us so well we do need to push ourselves and if we start off at the beginning of the week working in with some meditation some self-care and love it kind of sets us up for success because we feel stronger and we feel rejuvenated after a meditation that really didn't take too long wasn't painful felt pretty good you're rewarding yourself for a little bit of time just for you it's easier to implement throughout the week and I know it can be a bear to try and balance everything out. This is movement for you. You need to have that connection. Like I said, we need to be present for ourselves. It's one of the ways that we can really connect in to the present and here and now. Because we're focusing in on our breath. Not on what's going wrong, those challenges, those burdens, those pains and heartache. We're focusing in on our breath. And then we can make some decisions on what we want to focus in on after the meditation. As many people, when they're meditating, are opening themselves up to that insight and guidance that we're looking for. It gives us that aha to move forward on. All right, let's go on to some blessings. What blessings can my Smoky Quartz friends embrace for the week of April 4th through to the 10th? bittersweet. It's really hard to focus in on the present, possibly do some healing, some releasing. We need it though, now more than ever. Like I said, we have the ability to talk ourselves out of so much, especially when we're looking at healing and releasing things. Things we necessarily don't want to give up because we have familiarity in it. It may not be serving us in any fashion, not in a high vibrational way, but it has that familiarity and a false sense of security. It can be a real challenge to start to look at releasing. However, until we do that, until we start to release some of this fluffy puffiness that we've created to quote unquote protect us, we're not going to get anywhere. That release is essential. Now, I have a couple meditations that will really support you in this release. The first one is with Archangel Metatron, where we're looking at releasing that heartache and pain. It's one of the easiest releases we can do that's going to well, rejuvenate us. Now we're not looking at going through specific events or situations. It's a global healing. We're releasing it as a whole. And like I said, many of us have comfort in that heartache and pain. It's familiar. However, when we release it, we have the space for the growth and the abundance we're looking for. Think of it as having a cup inside of you. We can only hold so much before it starts to overflow and we feel overwhelmed and burdened. However, if we start to reach down deep inside and start to pull out the gunky heaviness that's kind of sitting at the bottom, well, we're creating space within ourselves. Think of it as a fishbowl. When you take the sand out of the bottom, well, there's a lot of space for more water. It's exactly what we're looking at. So that meditation with Archangel Metatron is a fantastic starting out point. Another meditation that can help you out with kind of releasing some of this heaviness is a meditation that I brought out with Archangel Zadkiel where we're releasing disappointment. Such a big topic 
right? There's, we're carrying a lot of, you know, sadness and disappointment. Well, let's start to release some of that. Again, we don't need to go through situational events. We just globally want to release it. That disappointment, it's not serving us. It's not helping us out in any way. We need to focus in on stuff that will help us. And the final meditation that comes to mind is one I did last month with Archangel Mariel, where we're looking at releasing some of those memories. Now, all these meditations, the one that I did with Archangel Metatron, Archangel Zadkiel, or Archangel Mariel, they're dealing with some pretty heavy stuff. If you're still suffering from some, you know, uh, flashbacks or swirling thoughts on events or situations that you've lived through and survived, these may not be meditations you want to step into just yet. You may want to go with something like Archangel Raphael, where you can do some healing first. We don't want to trigger anything or re-traumatize ourselves because that's only going to kind of add to that heaviness. We want to release it and focus in on what's going to work, not get stuck in what didn't. Oh, and there is what's going to work. Joy. That love, that light. It's going to take you a lot further than all well, that heaviness and fear. Focus in on what's going right will support you in going a lot further, continuing your development and growth, and adding to the abundance and prosperity you have. When you focus in on the positive, well, we're using the law of karma to our advantage and we're getting it back at us. Usually a number of fold over. All right, let's end off on any final thoughts, wisdom, and guidance that we can share with my Smoky Quartz friends for the week of April 4th through the 10th. And you'll find that as you release and as you're focusing in on, you know, bettering self and reconnecting in with self, you're going to have more ability to focus in on the joy. Because I, I know it can be really hard to focus in on the joy when that heartache and fear is weighing heavy on you. The Knight of Pentacles. Similar to his cousin, the Knight of Swords, we're looking at that very determined energy. Whereas the Knight of Swords is running headlong into a storm, the Knight of Pentacles is busy focusing in on what's truly important to him. And that's his homeland, his home front. We do need to be focused in on ourselves this week. We don't want to hyper-focus in on it, because again, that's not balanced. And we don't want to kind of puff ourselves up more. We want to be honest with us because we know we need to cut away that fluffiness. Working to rekindle and strengthen the relationship we have with self is going to help you this week and the weeks to come. Now we do have a message here because we've got the Knight of Pentacles and the Knight of Swords. Knights are the 12th card in the Minor Arcana. When you have that multiple 12, the angels are telling you that this is a time of spiritual growth and development, which is very true here. Because the more we understand ourselves, the more we're open to what's right at hand. The Queen of Pentacles. Reconfirming that need to nurture and love self to help to flourish and grow. Because without that love for self, we're not going to be able to connect in with us. Again, you're kind of giving yourself lip service. Sure, I'm going to work on self. Yeah. 
Well, when you actually do it, you set those intentions, give yourself permission and start to nurture you, you're going to feel more rejuvenated. You're going to feel stronger and more able to tackle some of these harder aspects, some of these challenges that you're facing. So the Queen of Pentacles is reminding you, if you're starting to feel overwhelmed, take some time and love yourself. Indulge in some amazing self-care time. Additionally, the Queen of Pentacles is also reminding us of the need to have that very grounded, stable space within ourselves. The more grounded we are, the more stable and open we are to tackling some of these challenges. We're not as easy to topple. Our ego can't get on top of us. Of course, I've got meditations in both playlists that would support you in grounding yourself. You can pick and choose whichever meditation really resonates with you. And then you can use crystals to your advantage to help maintain that grounded energy that you've created within yourself. Now, crystals that I can recommend for that are any red or black crystal that will resonate with your root chakra that helps with that stability, helps with that groundedness. Crystals like tiger iron, black obsidian, black tourmaline are fantastic, are easy to get and readily available. They don't cost too much because crystals can get expensive. And no, you don't need to go big or go home. Crystals that are small and easy to you know, hold and maneuver can sometimes be more powerful than the bigger ones because they're, well, they're easier to, to connect in with. Those bigger crystals, they can be sometimes harder to connect in with. So you don't need to go big, just go meaningful. <laughs> so we started on a king and we're ending on a king. The King of Swords. So the king reminds us that we need to be using our head, not our heart. That heartache, that fear is going to slow us down. If we use our brain and critically think and analyze what's happening for us, what's going on, and reflect in, we're going to gain the insight and aha we need to well, go forward. Many of us feel like we're blindly wandering around. We don't know where we're going. We don't know where we've been. But that reflection and that knowledge is going to go a long way in helping to gain direction. Gain that understanding we need to make some positive shifts in our lives. Now, don't get me wrong. This meditation, this connection with self, is going to give you a lot of knowledge. And that in itself is a shift. But the growth we're looking for comes from using this knowledge to our advantage. We just don't want to acquire the knowledge and say, yep, I understand, and not put action to it. We have two action-oriented cards. We need to put action to that knowledge. Without it, it the knowledge is useless we need to start to put action to that knowledge slowly and steadily. Those, you know, stable, slow steps, they'll help you move forward a lot quicker than those leaps of faith. Because those leaps of faith, those major changes, well, your ego amplifies that uncertainty and instability that they naturally have, which causes you to regress which causes even more heartache and pain to try and deal with. And then it's even harder to start to make some movement for your greater good. So, slow and steady truly does win the race. Now, like I said, we do have the double kings, the king of swords, the king of cups. Kings are the 14th card in the major arcana. When you see that multiple 14, the angels are reminding you you attract what your energies 
put out. So if you're focusing in on that heartache and pain, guess what you're going to get back? However, if you focus in on that joy, that light, that love, and what's going right in your life, guess what you're going to get back? Again, using the law of karma to your advantage. So not only do we want to start to take control of our emotions, we want to start to use the natural laws to our advantage. It's up to us to make the decisions that are for our greater good. I want to thank you guys so very much for joining me today and watching this video. I hope that you found this video fun and helpful and you're able to gain some insight and direction into what the week holds for you. If you like this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up. It helps me be found on the sea of YouTube, which supports us collectively, starting to raise our vibration and getting ourselves unstuck. And if you did like this video, don't forget to subscribe. There's so much more coming your way and you don't want to miss any of it. The best way to stay connected so you don't miss out on any of this amazing insight, healing and education is through subscribing to my channel and hitting that little red bell so you don't miss a video. And also, if you did enjoy this video and want to support me making more, I do have a Patreon page. I have provided a link below, so why not go check it out? Until tomorrow, my smoky quartz friends. <laughs>